Well, welcome everyone to today's webinar. My name is Matt Bayer. I'm the founder of Q4 Launch, and we are excited that you guys are along for the ride for us as we dive into uh, five or increase your fall bookings in five easy steps. I uh, bounced around on the how we were going to phrase the uh, title for today a little bit, but that's where we landed. So, uh, increase your fall bookings in five easy steps. Uh, I tell you, uh, many of you that follow our webinar series regularly. Um, know that I was actually just out in Colorado and uh, and was up at uh, Aspen Snowmass, Copper Canyon, Vail area, um, doing a Ragnar relay race and ran 35 miles in about uh, 24 hours. And it felt like fall. So I knew I was prepping for this topic. I uh, worked on some of the content before I left and really finalized the content on my flight home. Uh, but uh, it was good. It was good to get a, a breath of fall uh, before uh, writing this content for today's webinar, uh, it was 40 degrees overnight while we were running through the night um, down, I think it was Glenwood Canyon we ran down, for those of you that are joining us from Colorado. So exciting stuff, had a great time, um, it took a couple of days to be able to walk again after such an experience, but uh, glad to be back in the office and uh, and things went really, really well. So thank you, many. you sent me emails, wishing me good luck on that, so I wanted to share that update with those of you who join us regularly. If this is your first time with us, welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, Q4 Launch is a marketing company that's based in Charleston, South Carolina, and we specialize in working with the destinations and lodging properties all over the world, um, from Maui to Singapore and just about everywhere in between, uh, with most of our customers being in the United States, um, but some international customers as well. Um, and we do a, this webinar series that you're joining us on about every two weeks to kind of share what we're learning uh, with the industry, update you on what's going on, share what we're learning, things we're working on to help you better market yourselves. We believe if we all do a better job of marketing ourselves, it will help our industry grow. And that's what we want to see is growth for the industry and success for everyone in it. Uh, so that's a lot of our commitment. We give away a lot of information, a lot of strategies. Um, what we're going to walk you through today on how to increase your fall bookings is exactly uh, what we do for our customers is we're planning their marketing strategies, um, the conversations that we have with ourselves, uh, in a lot of cases, the things that we're doing there. Um, yeah, so really important information, good information for you guys to have, and we're happy to share that with you um, uh, along the way. So with that, let's dive in. We will use our chat panel for questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to put those in the chat panel, and we will make sure that we get to those throughout our time. You can put them in there at any time and we'll address those with some Q&A time later on in the webinar. So let's dive in. Uh, first, why fall, right? I mean, why do we need to be focused on fall? Many of us are in a destination where summer is peak season, uh, and it, getting out of summer, you're probably absolutely exhausted. I know talking to a lot of our customers in the last few weeks, they're absolutely ex exhausted. And the idea of marketing right now is probably the last thing on their mind. Um, but that's why, that's one of the reasons it's such a good opportunity. You know, as, as we look at our customer base and, and their, uh, they routinely run really, really strong for their peak season. You probably do too. And, and a lot of people think that doesn't, that means there's not opportunities for revenue growth in peak season. We know that there are tons of opportunities for revenue growth, even when you're 100% booked or close to it. And we're not going to cover that today. But fall presents a great opportunity for revenue growth. Many of you have unused inventory or excess capacity in fall. So great opportunity for revenue growth. Many of you are in destinations where leaf season is a big thing and you have a ton of business in the fall and that's great. Uh, but many of you don't. Many of you don't have a draw like leaf season to pull people in in the fall. So you've got to think about other things that might pull people in. We're going to talk about both those audiences today. But lots of travel is happening in the fall. Um, lots going on. And some of the emails that uh, we sent you, you might have saw some of the statistics that we quoted about the number of people traveling in the fall. I think 9.2 million boomers are going to travel this fall. So tons of opportunity available. Millennials are traveling more than any generation ever has, um, and travel is a big part of that uh, for that generation. So you know that, you've heard that. So there's lots of travel happening in the fall. There's less marketing happening um, because most of your competitors are tired from peak season. There's lots of reasons why there's less marketing happening, but in this season, between peak season and Christmas season, there is less marketing happening. Uh, leading up to Christmas, there's more marketing happening as a marketing and more advertising happening as, a, as an industry than any other time of year. So it gets really difficult to get people's attention during that season, but there's a little bit less marketing happening right now, so it's easier to get people's attention. Um, and there's a lot of events you can leverage to encourage travel. There's a lot going on in many destinations this fall. 
So you can use those to encourage travel. So great opportunity that why fall is the best time to be going after new business. And what we want to do today is to set you up with five steps or five strategies to really help you go after that business. So with no further ado, let's, dump, let's jump into step number one, uh, and that's to set the mood. You know, we talk about this a little bit. We don't talk about this a ton on our webinars. Honestly, we should probably talk about it more. We talk about how consumers behave. Uh, and as a company, I think that's one of our big strengths is really diving into and understanding how consumers behave. Um, and a lot of that comes from a place of being able to set the mood. Consumers make emotional buying decisions. We know that every survey, every study ever done on consumer behavior comes back with that information. They make emotional buying decisions. But what drives emotional response in the fall? You need to answer that question for your own destination. You need to understand the adjectives to use. You can't speak and market the same way in the fall, the way you do the rest of the year. And we're talking about marketing in the fall today, but honestly, plug in any season any time of year, and many of the tips we're going to talk about today are applicable. So you should be using these for your winter marketing, your spring marketing, your summer marketing. We're just tailoring it to the fall for you today as we know we're headed into that. But what are those adjectives you need to, to use? Adjectives will evict any, or elicit, excuse me, adjectives will elicit an emotional response from your consumer, and that's what you want to do. You also need to use images and other words besides adjectives very, very well to tie back to that emotional response. Leaves, pumpkins, apples, cider, bonfires, outdoors, hiking. Think about the themes that think fall, that speak fall, that make people anticipate fall. I'll tell you, up until the point I left for Colorado last week, it was about 95 degrees and 100% humidity here in Charleston, South Carolina, where we're headquartered. Uh, and I was training for a long distance run in the midst of all of that. So I was desperate for fall before we left. And now fall has arrived, like it's 65 degrees or something today, which is super bizarre for us. But the point being, a lot of customers around the, your destinations are desperate for fall. They're excited for summer going into it, but now the kids are back in school. It's still brutally hot in a lot of places because it's still August for two more days or one and a half more days. And they're ready. They're ready for fall. They're ready for that clean, crisp air that the fall provides. They're ready for pumpkin patches. They're ready for corn mazes. They're ready for hot apple cider. They're ready to sit around the bonfire with their friends and play guitar. You've got to think about your destination, your properties, and tell that story in a way that gets them excited. If you can get them excited for fall, you're going to drive business for yourself. And a great case study of this, and I'm not going to dive into it today. I don't have, you know, a ton of examples for you and all that. But is the pumpkin spice latte. Think about what the pumpkin spice latte has done for Starbucks in the fall. Go out and Google that, research that, and, and look at some of the ways Starbucks is marketing the pumpkin spice latte, and you will see a great example of setting the mood. They've set the mood for fall really, really well with the pumpkin spice latte. Starbucks sets the mood for the holidays really, really well with their red cups. Despite the controversy that they may or may not cause on purpose with their red cups, they know how to set the mood, and they know that's a tremendous time for them to sell $6 lattes when people are out doing their Christmas shopping. So they use this information to set the mood really, really well. Everything about their brand and their store wraps around setting the mood. Everything around most companies wraps around setting the mood. The reason that fast food restaurants use red the reason that Starbucks creates this warm, inviting atmosphere, the reason certain restaurants keep their temperature cold enough that you don't want to stay very long. They're thinking about these things very intentionally, and they're setting the mood. And you need to be doing that same thing with your marketing to your customers. What adjectives get them excited? What images elicit an emotional response? And how do you get them to make an emotional buying decision? You know, who doesn't want to be this couple that's on the screen right here? Who doesn't want to get excited about that? Um, those are the kind of things that drive people to spend money, to take trips, to create memories. Memories are worth so much, especially to the millennial generation. So wrap your marketing around that as you're headed into fall, and you will have great success. So that's step number one. Step number two, check the calendar, booking history, and set your rates. Honestly, this is like three tips in one, but I, didn't, I, was, I was working on it. And I was like, well, we already committed to five steps, so I can't make it seven now. Um, so this is a lot all at once. But know what events you need to leverage this fall. 
Travel is a little bit lower in the fall or significantly lower in some destinations. So you need to leverage events. University events are great. You don't have university events in the summer to rally around. And for those of you that are near universities, I know a lot of our customers are near universities. It's a tremendous opportunity. Football, homecoming, parents weekend, rally around those events, drive demand around those events. There's existing demand that's already there, but you need to go out and reach that demand. You need to create the content to help you reach those people. Uh, seasonal events, orchards, pumpkin patches, corn mazes, trails, races. Um, we talked about a lot of those things, uh, some of those things in setting the mood a few minutes ago, but that's a really important part of this overall mix as well. Like, What are those seasonal events? Uh, what's going on that makes people want to come? I'll tell you one of our family traditions uh, is to go cut down a Christmas tree every year. And living in Charleston, South Carolina, we don't really have a place we can cut down a Christmas tree. So Every year, we plan a trip to the, the mountains in, uh, in North Carolina, South Carolina area, um, and spend a weekend going and having that experience. Um, my wife also loves apple picking, so we go and we have that experience in the fall. We're not quite as committed to that one. Uh, there's some, some years that doesn't happen uh, because I travel a ton in the fall for conferences and so forth. But those are the things. Like Those are the emotional experiences that customers want to have. And when you look for those, when you find the pumpkin patch, when you find the apple orchard, when you find the corn maze, you can communicate those in a way that makes people want to come have those experiences, that makes people want to come create those memories. So leverage those seasonal events that are going on around you. Hiking trails being a great example as well. People want to get outside. You know, it's been too hot in some destinations uh, to really get outside and enjoy it. So they want to get out and enjoy that clean, crisp air. Um, races is an area close to my heart. I shared, I just went out and did the Ragnar Relay, but we spent money. Uh, we spent money at hotels and at vacation rentals on that trip, um, all driven around this race that brought a thousand people um, or so, maybe more. I don't know, maybe a couple thousand people, whatever. Um, but the, it, it, there was a lot of marketing in those destinations around this. There were signs everywhere. People were trying to attract that customer to them. So you need to know what's going on in your destination. destination. Create your own events as well. I know some of you may not, you may be like, man, I don't have any of that. I don't have a university. I don't have an orchard. I don't have a pumpkin patch. Create your own. Like, it's more work, but get out there and do it. Create yoga retreats, wellness retreats, cooking classes, wine tastings, brewery tours. With a little bit of work, you can create your own experiences. Doesn't mean you have to go on them, right? You can create a self-guided brewery tour, a self-guided wine tour, um, or you could upsell it as a package or a special, and you can create a whole thing around it. You could partner with a local yoga studio and bring them in to lead a yoga retreat uh, for your customer, for your guests, or a wellness retreat, or maybe partner with a yoga teacher that has their own following. Uh, we have a lot of customers that have done that, that have partnered, partnered with a yoga uh, teacher that we have a relationship with. And, they, and she goes in and plans these events, and, and we market it to their customer base, but she also markets, markets it to her customer base. Um, and we they create this event around that that sells dates, sells nights that otherwise might not have been sold. Fall breaks are also becoming increasingly popular travel times. We're seeing some growth in the number of days of fall breaks, uh, which is driving more people to travel around fall break. There's also more and more people who are getting the word that summer is an expensive time to travel and rates are lower in the fall. Uh, so fall break is growing because it's a little bit less expensive time and it's a less crowded time to travel. But if you haven't jumped on that, you need to be thinking about how do we market fall break effectively. It's becoming an increasingly popular travel time. And as you're doing that, think about the family, but also think about the teachers. You know, maybe you don't cater to families. Maybe your kid, uh, you're, you're a no kids um, property. We represent a lot of no kid properties. Um, so you're thinking, oh, that doesn't apply to me. But if the kids are on fall break, that also means the teachers are on fall break. Now, some destinations make their kids work, or excuse me, their the kids work, make the teachers work over fall break. But most that we know of, the teachers also get fall break off. So you need to be thinking about that. You need to not know the, the school calendar in your destination, but you need to look at the feeder destinations, the people that come to you and say, okay, I need to know those calendars because typically they'll have a consistent calendar. Um, and I need to know their school schedules, their school calendars, and market effectively around those school calendars. Um, so really important data to have. And you can find those feeder markets. Now, I know a lot of you probably could name three to five off the top of your head, and that's great. Um, but you can also look in your Google Analytics and say, who's coming to my website? 
what are the ge what are the, what's the geographic location of the people coming to my website? And you'll find that data in your Google Analytics to be able to figure out who, what calendars do you need to be looking at from a school perspective. Next tip there, leverage the work your CVB or your DMO is doing around festivals and events. I know that you know we're seeing this growth in DMO as a term over the last 10 years probably, but I know some of you still call them CVBs. Um, but who is marketing your destination? Is it your destination marketing organization? Is it your convention and visitors bureau? Whatever you call it, a lot of them do great work in the fall around events, festivals, Oktoberfest, concerts, balloon rallies, like there's tons of things going on in the fall. Um, leverage that work. Create content around that work. Some of our most successful content strategies have been around festivals and events. We create content for our customers around the event. They market that content to past guests to say, hey, come check out the Corvette Festival. It's a great time. Or come to Oktoberfest. It's a great time. But we also write the blog for them that helps them get found. So when people are searching for information on Oktoberfest or the hot air balloon rally or the Labor Day concert or whatever it is, they're finding our customers. And when they're planning a trip to your destination, they're looking for more information. Wouldn't it be great if they found you in that process because you're providing the lodging that they are going to need when they visit your destination. So leveraging that event, but then creating your own content and your own marketing around it is going to help you reach customers. And as you're doing this, leverage, uh, excuse me, brainstorm a list of all of them. Like there's a lot of types of events on here. Brainstorm a list, write down everything you can find and start thinking about what's gonna bring people to town, what are the type of customers that we wanna be attracting and create marketing that's gonna help you do that. Next part of this is to check your three year booking history and set your rates. I'm not gonna spend as much time here but we teach a whole webinar on how to do this effectively. Um, but look at the last three years and look for periods of time that you've had 70% or greater occupancy. Now that might, I'm not saying look at months where you've had 70% or greater occupancy. That might be weekends. It could be weeks. It could be months. I don't know. Uh, it might be lease season. You might know that you've got a two week lease season and you sell that out every single year. Uh, and you need to look at that. It might be that it's weekends in the fall. It might be that it's the entire month of October. I don't know for you, but look at those periods of time that you're running 70% or more occupancy and consider raising your rates or just can or just raise your rates because if you raise your if you've been selling out historically and that's why we say look at three years if you've sold that out historically and it wasn't just a fluke that happened one year chances are you're going to sell it out again this year if we're going to likely sell it out again this year we can raise our rates i'd rather raise i would rather raise my rate 20 or 30 percent and not sell out than sell out and have a rate too low and I, we've done the math on past webinars and shown that to you how that works you can do the math for yourself what it looks like to raise your rate by 30% and only have 85% occupancy instead of keeping your rate the same as last year but having 100%. You can figure that math out pretty quickly that it comes out in your favor um, and it's more profitable. And then look at those periods where you had lower occupancy time and create specials and packages around those things. Create reasons to visit around those things. Notice I said create reasons to visit. Don't default to cutting rate. Right, your rates are probably already a little bit lower in the fall if you're using seasonal rates like most people are. Um, if you're not using seasonal rates, I would definitely start with that from a, a yield management one-on-one perspective. Um, but create specials and packages because you can drive demand with awareness. You can raise awareness about stuff going on. You can create your own events. You can create specials and packages around other people's events and drive occupancy in what has historically been lower occupancy times. And then you can also, of course, cut rates. Um, but as you do that, as you think about cutting rates to try to drive more demand or more revenue, just make sure you're taking into account the inelasticity of demand. And what inelasticity of demand essentially means is that you could lower the price and keep lowering the price and keep lowering the price and get no greater occupancy, which would just mean you decreased revenue so much that it wasn't worth doing. So there is a point where your price is so low that you're not going to raise demand anymore. You could drop the price 50% and no one else would come because there's just that inelastic point. So you've gotta be thinking about that too and don't jump to cutting rate to try to increase the revenue coming in the door. It's not necessarily the best strategy to be able to do that. 
step number three, create fall specialism packages. So we kind of shared that as, a, as, as the end of step number two, but then wanted to kind of set you up with some uh, information here on how to do that effect, uh, effectively. Make sure you're creating packages around any of the events that came to mind in step two. So in step two, we said brainstorm this list of events, university events, create your own events, uh, seasonal events, lots of those things. Like create that list, brainstorm it, and then create packages around the ones that you see driving the most um, driving the most business for your area. And even if a guest doesn't book that package, it makes them aware of things to do. So they may not book the package, but they may still come stay with you. You know, the package may not be lined up exactly with what they wanted their vacation experience to look like, but they may still drive an awareness that they end up coming to stay with you as a result of. So don't measure success of a, of a package just by how many people booked it. Um, it's part of a marketing plan, whether anyone books it or not. Um, so that's a really important consideration. I know a lot of people have written off packaging uh, altogether because they said, oh, people didn't book the packages. I wouldn't say that that's the way we measure success. It's one of the measures of success of a package, but not the only measure of success. A lot of it is really just raising awareness and creating that marketing opportunity. It also gets your partners involved, uh, other businesses in your community that might be a part of that package in marketing in that. And you can elicit their help in marketing that because they've got skin in the game. They're going to benefit from the growth that you drive from that package. So that's a great opportunity as well. And this is something we help our customers with um, in creating these specials and packages, like really thinking about it. Um, and we try to take a data-driven approach to this. We try to think about, okay, what are people searching for this fall? And if they're searching for it, i.e. if there's demand for it around pumpkin patches, around all the things we've talked about, maybe we should create a package for it. Or let's look at our blogs. What of our blogs are performing really, really well? We did this with a customer. We had a, a lot of blogs performing really, really well about outdoor adventures in their area. So we had all these blogs, and the one unifying thing that tied them all together was this sense of outdoor adventure. Um, so we, with, with the customer, created an outdoor adventure package. Uh, and then we went back to those blogs because we saw they were successful and we added in a call to action for our outdoor adventure package. So we know you found us because you're looking for zip lining or rafting or hiking or whatever. But now that you found us for that, book our outdoor adventure package. Um, and we really spoke directly to that demographic through creating packages that line up with what's working in the rest of our marketing strategy and then being able to bring that traffic in and convert that traffic. So really effective way of creating a special and packages and a few ways on how to get there, like how to know what specials and packages are an important part to create. Once you've created those in step number three, take step, step number four and take a different marketing approach to reach new guests. There are things you're gonna to wanna to do that you've always done and that's great. I'm not saying stop doing those things. You've always done social media and you do a great job at it. That's awesome, good for you. Um, you've always done email marketing. You do a great job at it. Great. That's good for you. The point I'm trying to make here is be willing to do something different. Fall is a time where you might have a little bit more time than you typically do to try new things from a marketing perspective. So be open to that. You've got to think about what new things are for you um, and go about that. But here's a few ideas. Make sure you have a marketing game plan that you know you have a strategy. You know how you're going to execute on that strategy. Um, because if you decide you want to send an email campaign and you don't have a game plan on how to do that, it's a lot of work to send your first email campaign. Pick a software, sign up, set it up, get your list in there, create a template, load your first content. It's a lot of work to do all that. Not as much work to send future campaigns, but a lot of work to get the first one. So you need to know if that's going to be part of your game plan and you need to do the work to get that set up ahead of time. So when you're ready to execute, you can execute. Because if you decide, hey, I really, wow, there's this great event coming to town. I need to start marketing that. But you don't have a game plan. You don't have all these tools set up to help you do it. You likely won't get it done because you'll have too long or too short of a window between now and the event. And you won't get done what needs to get done. So you need to have the tools in place, have the game plan to be able to execute it effectively quickly because fall is here. Like basically fall is next week. So you need to be getting on that and getting ready for it. Create fall specific content uh, is very, very effective. I talked a lot about that kind of throughout uh, our different steps here, but things to do, you know, maybe you need to write a blog, things to do in the fall in your destination, fill in the blank. 
Maybe you need to update your website imagery to really speak fall and elicit that emotional response and work through some of those things. So when co someone comes to your website and you're thinking about fall, you're connecting with them on that level. That you're not marketing Christmas, you're not marketing Valentine's Day, uh, although maybe you should be marketing Christmas a little bit because we're already looking at that and booking for that in some of our destinations. But um, but you get the point. Like update the experience that your guests have so you're speaking to them and you'll get that booking. Market, we miss you to peak season travelers with fall rates or special comeback rates. I think this is something as an industry we don't do a great job of, and that's really nurturing our past guests to make them repeat guests. And this is something that we spend a lot of time with our customers focused on, and we're spending a lot more time in the coming years focusing on, because we believe this is one of the largest areas of untapped opportunity in the uh, travel space. Uh, and that's that marketing to past guests as well as marketing to guests before they arrive. Um, but market, we miss you. Like this, the number one person who will do business with you is the person who has done business with you in the past. If they've been to your destination, they're more likely to come back than someone is who's never been there before at all. So you've got to think about that and know you have this database of people that have already spent money with you, they're already familiar with you, and you can market to them relatively inexpensively and get them to come back. And if they're used to being at your destination in peak season, or maybe they were just here a few weeks ago for peak season travel, they're used to paying a higher rate. So your fall rate, even that full fall rate, I'm not saying discount your fall rate, but your fall rate, if you have seasonal rates, may be lower than your peak season rate. And they get excited about that because they get to come back and have that experience again for a, at a less expensive price because it's, it's shoulder season instead of peak season. Your rate might be higher because it's leaf season and that's great. Like I'm not saying discount that. Uh, that's great thing for you too. Um, but that's a great opportunity to bring people back. Make sure that you're partnering with local businesses to market your co-branded packages. So that's one of the things packages can do well for you uh, is create partners in, in, the, in the success of both your businesses. So if you're partnered with that orchard or that pumpkin patch or that zip line company, probably not doing rafting in the fall because it's a little cold for that, but whatever, you get the point. You guys can market those things together and get both of you driving traffic for each other which can be really effective because you're typically going to have a little bit different list that you're used to marketing to. Be fast and frequent with your messaging. That's really important. There tends to be more last minute travelers in the fall, which is why it's so important to have your game plan in place so that you can be fast and frequent with your messaging. You need to be able to be nimble to respond quickly when there's opportunities. Leaf season is somewhat predictable, but it's also somewhat unpredictable. So you need to be thinking about that. And how do you market that effectively? How do you keep people up to date with what's going on in your destination? And email marketing and social media are great mediums. They're great tools for fast and frequent messaging. So as you're looking at your marketing mix, think about those as two mediums you can get information out very quickly. Maybe this is the season you need to be boosting posts, whereas typically you don't spend a lot of money on boosted posts. Maybe now is a good time to be able to do that. I'm not saying that it is. You got to think about that for yourself, figure your own strategy out. Um, but maybe it is. It's an opportunity. Uh, and it's a time where fast and frequent messaging can be very, very effective. So step number five, we've kind of walked you through some steps of marketing that. But our last step here, our last tip here, our last strategy uh, is take advantage of the last minute travelers. We talked a little bit about the fact that there are more last minute travelers this time of year uh, than most times of year. So it's a great opportunity to take advantage of those last minute travelers. Um, booking windows are gonna shrink. Because demand is lower, we typically see booking windows shrink for this season as well. Uh, the weather is unpredictable, peak leaf viewing is unpredictable, uh, lots of unpredictability in the fall. So you need to really be able to have a strategy to target that last minute traveler. And being fast and frequent in your messaging, as we mentioned in our last step, is gonna be a part of that process. Target your drive markets. Drive markets are more likely to take fall vacation, fall trips than other markets. You know, in the springtime, we see a lot of um, people are tired of winter, so they want to go to a really warm destination. Um, so that we see a, a, the Caribbean sees a huge boost in travel in the winter uh, and in the spring. But in the fall, people are tired of hot temperatures. So fall is typically a slower time for the Caribbean, and people are wanting to get to cooler weather. Uh, so they're going to those cooler destinations. And for a lot of you, that's your drive market. You know, the Caribbean is not a drive market for anyone. <laughs> so 
So think about that. Like your drive market is probably a better market to reach this time of year than in other times of year. You know, you're probably going to get less people flying in this time of year than in other times of year. So you need to think about that part of your strategy and knowing that your demographic is likely going to be a little bit different in the fall than it is in the summer. It's going to be different. And you've got to adapt to that. Because there's more last minute travel, we also recommend holding your rate longer if you've historically sold out for a date. Um, so if you're using active yield management or dynamic pricing, um, those are the people we're really speaking to with this. Holding your rate longer if you've historically sold out. So don't, you know, typically people might start cutting rate if they get within a week or two weeks of a date. Uh, depending on the property, people will start cutting rate earlier than that. But don't be afraid to hold that rate longer if you've historically sold out. There's opportunity to be able to do that. Awesome. The last thing here, you've got questions, we've got answers. We do have a uh, opportunity for you off today's webinar. If you're just looking for more information on what it looks like to, to market, uh, more specifically, like how we can help you with that. Like I'm not like this isn't we're going to send you a one page white paper. We shared a lot of that information on the webinar today. But if you'd like more information on how Q4 launch can help you with your marketing, how to help you drive more bookings, we want to help you with that. Um, we want to make that available for you. So um, we've got a poll on your screen. I'd like more information on how Q4 launch can help me increase my bookings. Um, and we'll follow up with you on that. Uh, just something to say, hey, maybe we've peaked some ideas for you. But you're a little bit overwhelmed by this whole idea of creating a game plan and figuring that out. How do I get started? What do I do? Just click yes and we'll get in touch. Doesn't make a commitment. Just kind of cues us up to say, wow, this is great information. We'd like to take a next step and learn a little bit more about what it looks like to work with Q4 launch. Um, we could get you guys to vote in that, that poll. That'd be great. Uh, yes or no, no big deal. Doesn't matter to us. Just if you could select one of those, um, then we know. Um, those of you who select like, yes, we will get in touch with you on kind of what it looks like to work with us. Maybe uh, we could help you drive more fall bookings. Uh, I know a lot of people are looking at fall and saying, man, we need to drive some business. Um, or maybe you're looking at your 2018 strategy already and you're interested in that and wanting to learn more about what it looks like to get more aggressive with your marketing in 2018. And we'd love to follow up with you on that. Now is also the time we'll uh, get to some Q&A. So if you have questions, jump those in the chat panel. Um, be happy to answer questions that you guys have off of our content. Uh, I know we moved through it pretty quickly today, um, but wanted to uh, leave plenty of time for Q&A, um, and we had to move our webinar up because we actually have another um, event going on at 2 o'clock um, here at our office, so we uh, had to kind of move things up and, and compress our time a little bit uh, for today's webinar, but hopefully that was all very helpful information for you. Um, so we will go ahead and get this poll closed out. Any last-minute yes or no's? Uh, it would be great if you guys can vote on that. And then we will go ahead and get this closed out. Awesome. And uh, questions, any questions that we have? I've got a question in the chat panel here um, from Susan. You talk about having a game plan and being ready to go. What mediums do you recommend doing that with? Um, Susan, our number two, our number one and number two recommended mediums for that fast last minute messaging are social media as well as email marketing. Uh, a couple things on both of those. Um, one, social media is a great opportunity, but you, you need to be invested in growing your following in social media all the time so that when you have a last minute message you want to get out, specifically a booking message, you've built an audience to be able to reach that message with. Uh, so that's a very important part of it. Uh, and hopefully you've built that audience over the, the history of your marketing. So now when you want to reach them with that message, you can do so effectively. The other part of that and then where it can, maybe your audience isn't huge, but if you have a very booking oriented message or a blog that you think is going to drive bookings around a specific event, you can target that using boosted posts. And that can be a really effective way. Like maybe you've got a two night package that you built for peak lease season or you've got something else. We don't recommend boosting posts that don't have financial return because you can spend a lot of money boosting posts just to get traffic. Um, and that's not really the point. Like we want to get traffic that converts. That's what we're after. So use your boosted post carefully and specifically. Um, but boosted post is a good way to reach people that look like the customer you want relatively inexpensively. And then the last step with email, um, we talked about the software piece of that. You have to have some platform set up. Don't send email out of your personal email account. Um, that's absolutely not a good idea. Um, so make sure you use software like Constant Contact or MailChimp or something like that. You have an account set up. You have your templates built, you have your list in there, it's all ready to go, so then when, you're, you, when you need to send a message quickly, you can get in there and do that. 
the number one reason we hear from people who don't send email marketing effectively um, and frequently is that they don't have the time for it. And it can be very time consuming. It can be intimidating for people at time as well. Um, but it can be done really, really effectively. And of all the marketing mediums, it provides the highest ROI of anything that's out there. So great opportunity to be able to do that if you do so, um, if you've got it ready to go. You got that plan, game plan, you know how you're going to use those things. As part of that game plan, uh, we also recommend developing a quarterly marketing plan. So you shouldn't be like sitting at the beginning of October thinking about how to market fall. Right now, you should have your fall marketing plan basically already done. Um, if you don't, hopefully today's webinar will spur you on with some steps to be able to do that. But sit down, take the time, and write your fall marketing plan out. What blogs do you need to create? What festivals are you focused on? What email campaigns are you going to send? Really write that out and commit it to paper because if you commit it to paper, it's more likely to get done. A lot of people have great marketing intentions. Very few people effectively execute on those intentions. And writing down a plan will help you start that process. Or maybe you've had great intentions in the past and you're just, you just never seem to get to it. Uh, that's, a, a, that's probably a sign that you may need some help. And if you need some help, get in touch with us. My contact information is on the screen. Uh, we'd love to talk to you about whether it's a good fit to work with us or not um, on helping you drive more business. That was actually our only question in the chat panel. We've got a couple thank yous. Uh, you're definitely welcome. Uh, but if there's any other questions in the chat panel, happy to answer those for you. Um, if not, we will wrap things up. So with that, thanks everybody for attending our webinar. This will be posted to our YouTube channel. So uh, if you uh, want to listen to it again, have members of your team listen to it, uh, really think through it, uh, we'll send a recording out of that as soon as we get it posted. So thanks everybody. We look forward to talking to you again soon and seeing you on our next webinar.